Welcome, I'm Darren, and I'll be your guide today as I rank the worst football card designs in 1993. 1993 was the year when the whole industry basically finally got the act together and were, were finally all making good cards, or more correctly, they were finally using all the tools to make good cards. That doesn't mean they were always successful. And moving forward, that would be kind of the, the model of people were making good card designs, but did they get carried away with what they were creating or did they lose track of what they were doing? And one of the big keys to cards in 1993 was images were becoming a much larger part of the design process. It was being taken more seriously because the quality of the cards were, were coming through a lot better, but also there was a lot of competition. So you really had to be paying attention. And in football, we had I pulled aside 25 different card designs for 1993 to compare. That's a lot of designs. So I am going to be having quite a few cards in this list, but it also helps you to understand just how the reason that card companies in, in football were so focused on trying to make great cards, there was just not much room to not really pull your weight. So this these cards are, well, what I want to do is I want to start off by talking about two cards that really don't fit in here, but they're not great cards. They're kind of in the middle, and there are a lot of in the middle cards I'm not going to talk about, but I want to talk about these cards because they're both related very heavily to images. And it gives a good idea of the nature of the relationship between images and card design, or you know, usually borders, as we move through, because that's what most of the rest of the cards are kind of suffering with. And so the first one I want to talk about is Stadium Club in football. Stadium Club was designed to showcase great images. It's just that in 1991, they didn't have good images, and in 1992, they were slow in improving those images. By 1993, they were finally getting their act together, and these images turned out great. The card design is also a little bit better in 1993 than it was in the previous two years, but that's not a good thing because they needed to make a much bigger Im uh, improvement for 1993, and they were still kind of sluggish in evolving the card design itself. So while the images became fantastic, the card design's quite lacking. And that becomes a problem when, when you get these cards because just having a great image on a card that you're looking at individually, fantastic, because you're focused on it. But when you line a number of these cards up, the images kind of run together and they compete and clash. And then you got a problem because there's no design element on the card to grab your attention and to kind of reset you and help you to see the individual cards iterated through. In baseball and hockey, they had better card design elements or the colors were better to kind of grab hold and help a little bit. In football, not so much. So for football, this is a really big problem because of the fact that even though the images are fantastic, the card design is not, and it limits the, the potential for these cards. Then when you shift over to score, score is, well, you would expect good images from score because starting in 1990, score picked up the game. And in 90 and 91, they had great images. So by 1993, you would expect above average images, which they do have. But they also, on these cards, have a pretty blocky, not great card design with a, a really great splash of team color. And that's where the strength of this card lies because on an individual basis, the cards are okay. But when you line a couple of them up, now all of a sudden the team element is, is lining up and the players are starting to pop out and you can see the players a bit better on these cards. So this is a case where you still have a good image, not a great one, but you have a good image, but you have a design that's helping the viewer to really appreciate the cards. So it has more dexterity than the Stadium Club cards. So in both of these cases, these cards are good, but they're not going to be the kinds of cards that you're going to remember down the road. Stadium Club almost could, but the thing is the design is not what you're going to be remembering. It's going to be the individual images if the images read well. So those are, are great examples of the, the strength and the importance of images. And as I move into the, I've got two honorable mentions. As I move into that, you can definitely see it at work with the first one, which is ProLine. And in the case of ProLine, when it started off, it had no border. 1992, again, no border. 
Well, Classic bought ProLine, and in 1993, they were able to finally launch into making regular player cards at for professional players. Not the classic games that we'd seen in the past. Now they were actually one of the main companies making player cards in football. And the card design they went with was, well, they were late to the party of the stripe down the side. That was a 1992 thing. To their credit, they have a bold team color with a counterpoint team color for the text. So every single card is heavily themed based on the team. That's good. The problem is that stripe on the side is a very bold element. And when you have a, a brash flash of team color, it can overpower the card. And that's what goes on here. And it's a shame because these images are fantastic images. They read so wonderfully. And even though the cardboard grabs your eye, it hangs onto your eye and it doesn't allow you to really appreciate the, the image until you get over the border and then allow the image to read. And if you get a number of these in a card page, then the, the borders tend to be stronger than the images. And so you don't really get to see the image. And it's a shame because they really do have great images. Basically, you have to stare at this card for long enough so that your retina burns out wherever that stripe is and then you can see the image and you can go from card to card as long as you line it up so that the black spot in your retina is lining up with the border element then the cards work well so this is a case where i love the cards because of the images but not because of the design and then the other honorable mention that i want to do is for playoff and for playoff the whole point of playoff was the tech chrome effect. And for tech chrome, it is a, it, it's really cool because it's got a, a, an interesting type of chrome where the light shines off and it causes things in the card to just glow. And that's the beauty of it. So the, for the design, they basically got rid of it and they just have a dumb black box and that's it. There's nothing else. Even worse, they used the same design as they'd done in 1992. So 92 and 93 are a bit, bit tricky to, to know the difference. You got to look at the card number on the back to tell the difference. But that's actually the strength. The fact that they have so little design is the strength because the big thing for playoff in 1993 is that the, the background is grayscale. And that means that the player pops out as a burst of color. And when you add in the tech chrome effect, that means those colors for the player are super vibrant. And because they're so vibrant, the player comes out and actually provides a really cool experience for the collector. If you take the time to allow the card to, to be explored. If you do that, then it works great. The card itself isn't going to grab your attention, but the effect is fun. So that's why ProLine with the really good images and the playoff effect of the, of the vibrant colors, that's why I have them as honorable mentions because they're not great cards, but I do like them. So when we move into the, the actual five cards that are the worst, this is where I'm moving into an area where I'm just not, I'm not a fan of these cards. And I start off at five with tops. And for tops, this is a card that has everything that it needs. First off, it has a great card back, best card back of all of these, which is a big plus. In fact, this card started out at two and it's, it's moved its way up to five in large part because the card back is so great that I, I really have to acknowledge it. But also on the front, they do have some pretty good images and the design work works really well for the team colors. But the big problem is that the images are not well presented. They're not well printed. These are not well made cards. And because they're not well made cards, when I look at it, I see all the detail until I look for the detail and it's not there. And they seem cheap. And so all of the strength that the card almost has, that's what it is. It almost has it. So it is a, it is a failure for the simple reason that they designed a great card, but they didn't manufacture it well. That's what it comes down to. But the, the colors are strong and bold and well designed. It works well with the images. This card is otherwise really quite impressive. And then when I move on to four, I'm moving to, uh, to Bowman. And for Bowman, this is actually better. The images are much better presented. They are better chosen and the images are printed well. And they also did a good job with the design where they almost got rid of everything. 
The design element in the card's actually not bad, but that white border around the outside is a problem and it makes the whole card clunky. Now, I'm not even gonna talk about the card back. I wanna pretend that it's not there. But for the card front, this is a card where I'm not a fan of it, but when I look at it, I go, man, these are some really good images. I wish that they did something, anything with the white border. Okay, I can't say anything because I think that the foil cards don't look as good. I think the foil cards are unfortunately kind of a, the low point of this card set. So strangely, the white border is better than an alternative. But regardless, the white border does not help this card because they did a great job with images, but they need something other than that white border and other than the foil to make it work. Whatever that was, I don't know, they didn't go with it. So here it is at number four. Now for number three, I'm going with Skybox Impact. And Skybox Impact was designed to be all about an image, just an image that you're able to really appreciate and some design elements in it that make the card kind of interesting. So instead of having some big flashy background art element, they just went with, no, it, it's an image. Why, you know, image should work well. And it does. And in fact, the text, the way the text is done, I really like it. I like the ghosting of the text up above. I love the, the player name and the logo for the team. I love how that comes through. They, the big question becomes, how do you make an image stand out? You can either hand select images that naturally read well, or you can take an image and you can kind of adjust the focus of the background so the background's not as strong and the player pops out. Well, that's not what they did here. They blurred the background. So that means that instead of just having a narrow frame of focus like cards normally have when they, when they do this trick, here it actually gets fuzzy. So that means that the player becomes more vivid and more vibrant in, his, in the focus that his, he has in the card. And that's a cool effect but you gotta spend some time allowing it to happen. And the problem is that if, after a while, all that blurriness on the outside is distracting and he's not distinct from it. And so it's almost like there's this hole of focus in an otherwise unfocused image. And that's the problem I have with these cards is that the, the blurriness is just too overpowering. I don't know what they were trying to do with it, but otherwise this card does have the elements to be really cool. I wish that they'd pulled it off, but they didn't. So for number two, I'm going back to playoff, but I'm going to contenders. And this is kind of funny because the contenders card is a better design on the front in terms of the design, because that box looks really nice. The problem is it's all color. And because of that, what you need for the tech chrome to really work is you need the contrast. And in the contrast, that's where the colors pop out. Here, everything is, it doesn't have the vibrance of a high fidelity image because they're not doing that. They're doing this, this cool kind of uh, almost a silvery toned quality to it that is a neat effect, but you gotta have the effect. And with this color, it just doesn't have the effect. And that's the problem. While technically the design is better, the card itself is not interesting. It's boring and the image, the image doesn't pop. So that's the problem that this card has. This card just doesn't do anything. Not that doing anything is a, a positive because necessarily, because when I move to number one, that's all that Pacific Prism is. It's just doing something and it's way too much. I love the idea. To me, this is one of those great ideas that's spoken, but once you create it, it's no longer a great idea. In fact, this is a perfect example of the great tradition of cards are meant to be opened and collected right away. It's supposed to be this year, and then you move on next year, and then you move on next year. Every year you have a, a different, unique card set to chase. And when you see these in 93, you get excited, you collect all the cards, and then you move on to whatever they've got in 94. When you come back to it, you realize it's just too much. The, the, the prism effect is overpowering on the card, which can kind of work on an insert, but for a regular set, no. And then the picture of the player is just pasted on and it just looks kind of dumb. So to me, this is a card that is just absolutely fantastic in 1993 until you take the time 
to appreciate the card and then you realize there's really nothing to appreciate about the card. It's too much, too much, way too much. So for me, that is my list of the worst football card designs of 1993. And it's a field of disappointments to just it didn't work. That's basically what the list is. I hope that you got kind of a feel for the importance of, of images from the early examples that I gave, because I, I really do feel that, for me, I never really noticed the importance of images till I was doing the, all of these reviews. And now I see just how strong it is and how much it's affected me over the years. So I hope that that kind of helped. But regardless, these are my picks for the worst football card designs of 1993. And all I have left to do is basketball, so that'll be next week. And then I do the wrap up and I look at all of the worst or the worst examples across all the different sports. That'll be in a couple of weeks. And so until that that time comes, um, thank you very much for watching.